What is the oceanic food web? How and why is it changing? And why do these changes matter? Let's find out. Life began in the oceans over three and a half billion years ago with the development of the first autotrophs, organisms that produce energy using sunlight or chemical energy, carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients. Phytoplankton, microscopic organisms that perform photosynthesis in all the world's oceans, are the base of the entire oceanic food web. Life is dependent on the transfer of energy from primary producers like plants, protists, and phytoplankton to heterotrophs like animals. This transfer of energy is seen in the oceanic food web, a complex system of predation involving about a million species. Here's an example. Orcas, my favorite animal, are considered apex predators, meaning they're at the top of the food web. Nothing hunts them and they hunt everything. Fish, squid, seals, sea lions, birds, dolphins, whales. Orcas have been spotted hunting and eating tiger sharks, which also eat everything, including hammerhead sharks. Hammerheads sometimes eat stingrays. Stingrays often hunt spider crabs, which eat snails, which eat seagrasses, which perform photosynthesis, making them the primary producer of that particular food chain. When you look at the big picture, a balance emerges. All populations affect each other. Where do we fit into this web? Humans are consumers, harvesting fish, seaweed, shellfish, squid, and various other organisms from the ocean. For thousands of years, human consumption was low enough to fit into the larger web. But recently, demand has vastly outmatched supply. Overfishing, the depletion of fish stock, has begun to impact the entire oceanic food web. If you take out one species, the whole system is threatened with collapse, and humans aren't just taking one. This quote from a World Wildlife Fund article about overfishing really hit me. When too many fish are taken out of the ocean, it creates an imbalance that can erode the food web and lead to a loss of other important marine life, including vulnerable species like sea turtles and corals. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the number of overfished stocks on the planet has tripled in 50 years. Today, one third of the world's assessed fisheries have been pushed beyond their biological limits. The World Wildlife Fund claims that today's worldwide fishing fleet is estimated to be up to two and a half times the capacity needed to catch what we actually need. Not only is overfishing endangering the marine environment, but it's also endangering people's lives. Billions of people around the world rely on fish and seafood for protein. It's not a source of food we can afford to lose. One interesting side effect of climate change and overfishing on the oceans is the rise of cephalopods, like octopi and squid. As humans take fish out of the food web, cephalopods rise to take their place. And rising temperatures due to climate change are speeding up cephalopods' already rapid population growth. What are some ways we can combat the effects of overfishing on the ocean? In America, you have a lot of power as a consumer. The Seafood Watch Pocket Guide can help you inform your food choices. Buying seafood responsibly pushes suppliers to source seafood responsibly, too. Your sustainable choices lead to a more sustainable future.